Hey guys, it's Sharon. I wanted to do a quick video. I just got back from the gym and I had a clinic today with my awesome program that I'm in um, for sensitization of pain, uh, which I feel I was probably predisposed to just like I was probably um, personality wise and lifestyle wise predisposed to my vestibular disorder. So guess what the topic was today? It was neuroplasticity with a, um, a pain psychologist and um, I think OT and, and Kenise were there too in the room. but. I'm so excited, I'm all in a tizzy because I had a, a member of Vestibular Hope yesterday post about, um, you know, that they kind of believed in my theory about the green line theory and they placed themselves as somebody with kind of a minimal um, vestibular um, deficit at onset. So they were just kind of struggling to focus on their gains and do these, um, use the techniques that I and others have described that help with recovery. So they were having trouble getting better and pushing up towards the green line of perceived recovery. So uh, last night, I intended to do this last night before I went to the gym, but um, I did some diagrams. So I just wanna show you here. This is um, a diagram just showing recovery over time. Now, we all will kind of start at a different level along the way and the time is, I'm telling you guys, we gotta, gotta let go of the timeline because the more time we put restrictions on ourselves, like I will be better within six weeks because I have this going on in my life. Um, the more time that we spend or the more focus we put on our timeline, the more stress we have and we know that we're less plastic when we're stressed out. So it's like a little fine balance, a little dance that we have to do with our sympathetic and our parasympathetic um, nervous system. So the people who start out here, um, people like I would consider myself kind of down here at the beginning where um, from the moment I woke up to the moment I closed my eyes at night and even after that, but, but you know, by the time I went to sleep, I was symptomatic. I was having um, difficulty with my vision, with my um, proprioception. I didn't know where my body was in space. I couldn't walk on it. So um, from the moment I woke up to the time I fell asleep, I was symptomatic. Now you've heard me say before that symptoms are recovery and I still firmly believe this to be true. Um, we are constantly, if we're constantly symptomatic, we're constantly engaging those damaged uh, signal pathways in our brain and we're constantly in recovery mode. It's hard to look at it like that, but that's my feeling is that, you know, getting from here to here brain-wise, it's like constantly focused on it. It might take a while depending on how good you are at controlling your anxiety and controlling, um, engaging your parasympathetic nervous system, but, which I think will speed this up and this time will become shorter if you can really kind of take that in. If that's the only thing you get from that, take that in. Watch my other video that I made yesterday. But once we get here, we aren't constantly engaged anymore. If we're at 75 plus percent, a lot of the neural pathways and the signal channels that we had to kind of sort out, they're sorted out. It's kind of the little things that we don't do all the time um, that are causing us issues when we do them. And it's frustrating, you guys. And like I said before, it's anytime you get frustrated with your symptoms, you become less plastic. Is it easy not to be frustrated? No. Um, towards the end though, once I accepted my symptoms as little projects and I became a detective about what triggered me, I got excited about doing the BRT because I had realized that even though I was up here um, and I wasn't kind of symptomatic all the time, which meant that I wasn't actively healing all the time, I got excited because I knew that if I could figure out the movements that would make me symptomatic or the environments that would make me symptomatic, I could use habituation or VRT and create my own little routine where if it was um, shoulder checks, you know, when you're driving along in your car and normally you're fun driving and then all of a sudden you make a quick head motion and you come back and you're like, oh my God, like I feel symptoms. I haven't felt symptoms at all, like in so long. And um, this, doesn't, this doesn't usually bother me. Maybe you have to work on that motion. Maybe you sit in your car, um, in your driveway or <laughs> preferably in your garage so people don't think you're crazy. Um, and you just practice shoulder checks. You look at it like VRT, like, you know, repetitions of whatever, 10, 10 repetitions and then take a rest and then 10 more maybe. Um, so that's kind of my advice for that. If it's the mall or if it's, you know, people, I hear a lot of people up here saying, I am fine at home, like at home I'm good, but you send me out to the grocery store for anything and I'm a hot mess, I'm a mess of symptoms and it drags on into my evening and that sort of thing. And that's fair, I have been there. Um, basically what you have to do 
is go more, go out more. You have to habituate your brain to this busy environment. Now you can do that gently and we want to do it gently. We don't want to engage the stress or sympathetic nervous system. So maybe what you do is you go with your husband or you go with a friend or you make sure you get a cart at minimums just to kind of rest on. And um, you just go for one item. And if you get the one item, you're gonna say, awesome, I did that. You know, I took the power back in myself to say, I am going to be brave. And I'm going to the mall, I'm going to the market, I'm going out to eat with my friends. And I'm gonna, you know, if I'm out with people, I'm gonna let them know that I have a vestibular issue. And that at any point, if I'm starting to knock on the door of my um, sympathetic nervous system, I'm out of here, guys. Like, see you later. Like, you can put my stuff back from my cart. but. That helped me tremendously. Repetition is key. The brain, thank God, is very predictable in its ability to kind of um, adjust to what we expose it to so long as we're able to remain in a parasympathetic engagement. So, so long as we're in a plastic parasympathetic peaceful state or trying to or just even being mindful that that's, what, that's the end goal, we will continue to kind of rise up to our green line. Now, you might be the person who I've just spoken with as well, um, who just kind of by the end of the day is just like, oh, guys, I just... I get through my day and I'm okay, I'm at work, I'm distracted, and then I get home and I'm so exhausted. Like, I, I've been there, I've been there too. Um, maybe what you have to do is up your VRT game, and not just, you know, physical stuff, but um, also maybe add in some cognitive stuff. So, you know, instead of just adding in um, the foam pad or, um, you know, standing on one foot and closing your eyes and all those things that make it challenging, maybe you work on figuring out what your friend's names are backwards. I'm Norash, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I used to be Norash Nosfred and I used to be Henderson. That's where Sharon Heng came from. Um, so, so yeah, so that's my advice to you. The other thing I need you to do if you're up here, especially if here over time is like two, three, five, 10, 15 years, Personally, at first, I didn't even want to think about you guys because all I could think about in my recovery was I do not have time to be sick for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Um, I have compassion and sympathy for um, people who are in the chronic stages. A lot of it has, has to do probably with the way that your medical team kind of handled it in the beginning. Did they put you on vestibular suppressants and that sort of thing that you you kind of are using as a crutch and can't get rid of and that sort of thing. So. Um, I have sympathy for you, but I also want everyone, and I had to take a hard look at myself as well, and have again had to take a hard look at myself. I'm a type A personality. I am a perfectionist. I am constantly doing things. Like I can't, if I leave a, a light on upstairs and I'm late for work, if I leave, like we have dormer lights, so they're, they're gonna be really hard to replace when um, they go out because it's a two story. If I forget the lights, it will bother me for like all my drive to work. I'm like, oh my God, I gotta go. Like I can't turn those lights out. I have to go. Like if I forget my water bottle, it bothers me, you know, for a while. I had to take a hard look at myself and just learn to let stuff go. Like if your breakfast dishes aren't done when you leave the house, like maybe just let it go and see what happens. So um, you have to realize, you know, that, you know, you probably predisposed, probably if there was a very Zen um, twin that you had that was kind of engaged in their parasympathetic nervous system more often anyway, they may not have even gotten sick with this illness in the first time. Like for me, I was running, I was training, I had run 26 kilometers the weekend before I got sick with a head cold and then also did a, um, a charity event where we raised um, awareness and we tried to get a um, donor for stem cells for a little girl who was sick and has since passed away. But um, I think about her all the time. She was a big part of my recovery and I'm friends with her um, mother and her aunt as well. But um, so I thank you, Marley, because Marley was her name and she's been with me, you know, through this whole thing because I think about her a lot. But regardless, I digress. I, um, I just want to let you guys know that we have to kind of take responsibility and look at ourselves and say, okay, there are things to do. I need to slow down. I need to stop engaging that sympathetic nervous system. I need to like chill out. Like when I'm bothered by the little things that are going on over here and the little things that are going on over there, I am not serving myself. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today. I did make another exhibit. I intend eventually to talk about gain frame and loss frame and what I believe chronic pain and PPPD um, are and how, how it's harder to come up, overcome those bad habits that we make of engaging our, parasymp our sympathetic nervous system over time. But um, in the meantime, 
Guys, I just want you to get better. That's all that I want. Um, I don't get paid to do this. I'm not a physician. I am just somebody who really cares. I, I forget who quoted it, but somebody said, people do not care how much you know until they know how much you care. And trust me, I care. So if you have um, disagreements, have them with me. I'm learning, I'm still learning. Like I said, I don't know it all. So enlighten me, let me know what you're doing. I wanna see um, what your safe place looks like. I want to know what kind of black belt VRT you're doing. Let me know and I'll let everyone know. I'm pretty good at that. Okay, guys, I will probably talk to you this summer. I'm going to take a bit of a um, break from social media and um, YouTube. Just, I have to pace myself. I got to get better. I have to stop with this shoulder injury. So until then, guys, um, just stay balanced. Stay centered. Find your center and try some things. Have an open mind. Okay, guys, bye for now.